the spring forward. Tell me, explain daylight savings time to me. Help me understand why we do this thing. Well, thank you for, uh, thank you to John Oliver. I saw this fantastic oh, I video. Love John I Oliver. just saw that earlier today, and learned that it has nothing at all to do with farming. Um, That's what farm- I always heard. Farmers, well, we all did, but which never made sense to me. So why would farmers want the day to be? sunny at the end of the day as opposed to earlier in the day well and like even this thing pointed out they don't care that doesn't matter it's not like care. it's not like if the sun comes up at six today and we make it come up at seven tomorrow it's not the like that. oh sweet yeah, yeah, yeah. Plant, plants the care. Upset. right well that's what the video pointed out it said you know cows cows don't care cows no. don't know anything about time no cows are idiots <gasps> so well they are that's why we eat them and make them into baseball gloves and coats and chairs and couches and and baseball gloves <laughs> right <laughs> you know i mean it's this is this is how this, I mean, they're not, they're just not that high up on the smart chain. I don't know. I just thought they were good. I just thought they were the, delicious. They are very delicious. Yeah. They don't have to be. Not um, that I really eat a lot of cow. No, they don't have to be smart to taste good. Right. Pigs are smart. They taste great, though. Uh-huh. Well, at least bacon. Does. I would say the bacon part for sure. <laughs> I really like, if if I were to give up meat again, I could not give up pork. I mean, I could, but. I couldn't give up bacon. I could yeah. give up pork. Except for the bacon part. Yeah, see, I, I'm okay without bacon. Not a big fan of bacon. Give me a pork chop or a pork loin. Mm. I just love the word loin, by the way. I, loin. We, l- last night, Warren made um, pork chops and homemade applesauce. Ooh, and Warren makes the, one of the best briskets ever, yo. Ever. So, yeah, you're kind of stuck with that for a while. Uh-huh. Me and I are friends now. We didn't <laughs> used to be, but we've gotten, we've gotten close. But not bacon. I'm not friends with bacon. How can you not be friends with bacon? <clears throat> bacon makes everything better. I it does. So. I mean, having a bad day, have some bacon. Bacon. You got a hamburger that you that could be better? Bacon. I, I right. just don't get it. I, I feel like bacon's like, like that's bad. That's a great turkey do you sandwich. Like, do you like having, bacon, Gabe? But add bacon to oh, it. Oh, he likes Sarah bacon. I've always liked bacon, not just not just because everyone does. All right. Well. I mean, it's fine. I just don't care for it. I, mean, I like turkey bacon. The sort way of. she said it, see, you, it's like you like a form of bacon. You said, she said like bacon before everybody liked it. <laughs> there was never a point in time where nobody yes. liked bacon. Yeah, this, there's <laughs> everybody has always liked okay, bacon. Okay, but now it's, now it's like a thing. It's like, it's like hipsters and PBR. It's, it's a thing. People, people and their bacon. There's, there are now cookbooks doing everything with bacon. Oh, okay. Totally. Oh, okay. For the last year, I've been saying if, if somebody would open up a... Starbucks type of bacon bar, they'd pop up on every other corner just as fast Doesn't as Starbucks did. Doesn't it make you feel, <laughs> feel a little grossed out eating a bunch of bacon? Don't you feel all greasy and gross? Uh, it depends on what time it is. Have you ever been outside of Denver and looked at Denver on a nice day and seen that big brown cloud and you're like, gross, and then you drive home and everything's fine and you don't think about it? <laughs> Right. That's bacon. But you drove into that <laughs> shitty cloud. Right. Same thing. Right. You're like you're eating it and you're like, oh, God, look at all the grease. Well, let's just wipe that. And then you eat it and you're like, oh, I'm in paradise. <laughs> this is great. So do you eat bacon just plain or do you always eat bacon on or in something? Plain, preferably. Yeah. Because I mean, it's just, it's so good that it deserves all the attention, I think. Like when you're eating it, it shouldn't always be in a sandwich as disguised, but pick it up so you can glorify it and be like, oh, <laughs> you know, and it. It's just, it's so good. I mean, bacon with everything. Like, I like bacon by itself, and then bacon with whatever else I'm eating bacon with, and Tuesdays, <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, bacon right. is just great. It can Dave, be overdone. Are you bacon by yourself or bacon on something, with something, um, in something? Bacon by itself, and if it's, if it's on a cheeseburger, maybe. I, I but, like, bacon and eggs, like, is that, a, is that a good breakfast to you? Bacon and oh, eggs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, when I'm being lazy, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a pound of bacon. And bacon and eggs. When it comes to bacon and eggs, bacon is definitely the forefront, the A thing of the bacon and eggs. But when you add like French toast or pancakes, it slightly moves to number two. It knows so it, its role. So it's not called eggs and bacon for a reason because it's really bacon, bacon and, and eggs. eggs. Yeah. yeah. But if you have chocolate chip pancakes, they, they automatically move to the forefront. <sighs> and then bacon. pancakes. Pancakes are gross. Oh, pancakes are great. Mm. Pancakes are what? Gross. How dare you speak of the of one of the greatest <laughs> I know, she's just in here the thrashing the breakfast, breakfast for all of us. <laughs> oh, what, what about waffles and French toast? No. I mean, no, a you. waffle is None just a pancake. No. It's just the way they... It's um, just shaped differently. That's all right. So, yeah, so I don't care for bacon. I don't care for... Pancakes. Pancakes or waffles. Or French, French toast. toast. Or French toast. 
Really? Whoa. Is like that, biscuits? Wait, wait, wait. Biscuits. Is, is there a bread or or gluten thing going on here? Nope. No? I just don't like it. Oh, no, because you just said you like biscuits. And I like bagels. Mm. Really like bagels. Like like bagel sandwiches. Yeah. Put eggs and cheese and stuff on a bagel. Give it to me. I think... Give it to me. If I was on a breakfast date with a, with a girl and she said she didn't like French toast, that would be like it. I well, that's like one thing, but I would kindly turn around and that's says, That's why we're no not married, Ronald. No that is why we're no not I mean, if All things being equal, we would be married. Oh, man. Yeah. So, no right. French toast? Are you. Wow. How about pizza? No pizza either. Okay. I like pizza. I can't eat it because of acid reflux. Tomato <laughs> sauce gives me issues. Uh-huh. But pizza is like sex. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's still pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've. You've had yeah. bad pizza or bad sex? Both. Somewhere you just start and you're like, God. That you both finished. Why you finished you? both the pizza <laughs> and you finished the sex. But that doesn't mean that you enjoy it. Like, I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I mean, describe I, enjoy. Well, I would like to take this conversation further, but that would push it into a Tuesday night. That's right. It's not a Tuesday <laughs> night. That is, that is for sure. That is our blue night. Is that our blue night Tuesdays? I guess. Exactly. Was. Yeah, well, it used to be it Used for to sure. be. Crazy nights. <laughs> So, so we are going to talk about uh, pot, cannabis, marijuana. You guys don't mind if I roll some up, do you? <clears throat> I think that that would be a You're gonna very do appropriate. The marijuana in here. So I just loaded a bowl of marijuana. So we're going to take a quick break if Jeremy knows how to do that. And when we come back, we're going to talk about a couple of things. And Gabe's coming to the rescue because um, we do want to talk about um, what everyone was talking about last week, which was Nate Jackson. You know, we never did even fit it. We touched on the. The time change, and then we got into bacon. <laughs> That's just That's how, it how powerful bacon is. It really is. It stops whatever you're talking. You're talking about time change, and you were about to to say that it's not for farmers, and what it really is for bacon. bacon. <laughs> Stop that shit right now. It's bacon. So when we come back, you can tell us the rest of, of your John Oliver um, story, and then we can talk about bacon. I was I mean, gonna say I mean, we got to talk about bacon. I mean, still. then we can talk about Nate. <laughs> See bacon. All right, we'll be right back. The Law Office of Edson, Maiden, and Matz provides criminal defense, family law, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running a medical marijuana center, optional premises cultivation operation, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout the state of Colorado. We're focused on providing high-quality service and customer satisfaction. We will do everything we can to meet your expectations. WarrenEdson.com, Edson, Maiden, and Matz in Denver, 303-831-8188, and in Aspen, 970-948-7183. Warren Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. Dispensary owners and growers. In today's world, it helps to be insured. So call Cuffo, Collimore and Company, where we provide medical marijuana insurance for dispensaries and growers. Are you looking for insurance that protects you against property theft? Then give Cuffo, Collimore and Company a call, where we include product liability and professional liability, as well as crop insurance for growers. Remember, find us at mmdispensaryinsurance.com or give us a call at 877-335-1234. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. Bacon. Bacon, mofos. Bacon. Bacon. And we're back. So so we were talking about time change when when bacon did take over. So, so tell us a little bit about why we started Time Change, why Daylight Savings Time is a thing, was a thing. Well, according to the John Oliver, why is this still a thing video? <laughs> I love um, John Oliver. It, it has nothing to do at all with farmers, but it started from Germany um, in World War I to help fuel costs. And it kind of spread throughout because everybody probably thought at one point in time it was a good idea. Um, but 100 years ago, we used energy a whole lot differently than we do today. So... Ideally, what kind of the moral of the video is, is that it's totally useless. They did show, he did say it's not totally useless as, as seen by these clips. And then it cuts to like a fox thing and it says, a fox so there's thing. a, or I don't it may have been an NBC, whichever one's the peacock. Uh, NBC. May have been that one. Um, and it was. Fox is the a-hole. 
No, it's not. Just Which what, there's something that came out today about Fox that I'd like to bring up in a little bit, but but we'll get to that. Um, but they they said that there's a, an increase in traffic accidents and other related issues in the week after the time change because on people, both ends, spring and fall. Mostly the mostly no, it's mostly the, the lost hour. Mostly one. the lost hour, but it does happen on both ends because you are confused. It's still confusion. Right, but most people are like like I don't have a specific sleeping schedule, and even today has just been super off. Um, and I woke I up late that. yesterday. It didn't even matter. Nothing. You know, it's like today. Today just feels off for some weird reason. And yeah. I'm reading around and everyone's having problems. And I know that the average person is having problems because if they have to get up at six in the morning, they're they're still screwed because they still don't get that hour back. Right, but it's right. like, but you, you do at bed. the end of the year. Right. And you could go to bed earlier. I really just hope they do away <laughs> with time change. You can't go to bed earlier, dumb. though. Because it's so light. No, it's not that. It's just that, like, because it's like basically telling yourself as a like a kid, telling your kid, all right, eight thirty. No, now you got to go to bed at seven thirty. Right. You're an adult. You, not only can you not tell yourself that, your body's <laughs> like, hey, I'm not ready. Like, go get drunk or something, and I'll go to bed in an hour. But you can't just do it. Almost. See, I'm I'm weird. I I must be very very gullible because my brain looks at a clock and says, oh, it's three thirty. Great. I, you know, jump on a plane, go to England. Oh, it's 3.30. Great. My body's like, great, 3.30. Got it. We're good. 3.30. You're lucky. Because when I see a clock, my body does the same thing, but the clock could be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My body doesn't put into account that this clock, my body just thinks that the clock is right because the clock is, the clock's better at taking time than I am. Right, right. So I just go, all right, whatever, and it could be wrong. My body still sleeps at the same time. Like 13 right, right. hours after it woke up, right? It only goes to sleep for four hours after it <laughs> laid down, you know. So yeah. I, I don't, I couldn't get used to just landing and being uh, acclimated to the time. That wouldn't happen in my world at yeah, all. Yeah, my world makes it kind of easy. My husband's world, he's still jet lagged from a trip we took in November. Like he just can't. It's tough. It's just so hard, so hard for some some people. All right. Anything else, Jeremy? You wanted to bring up before we talk about just the Germany. Marijuana. It started out in Germany and and. And twenty or it's thirty-seven marijuana. states still use it. Thirty-seven well, states use it still. Well, I, thought more, I thought more states. Did no, it. most uh-huh. most all of it. At least in the map that they showed, Arizona doesn't. Um, it, it, Indiana adopted it in two thousand six. And it's like, wow, you guys started that late. That's stupid. We should all be getting rid of it. Right. How, it's just dumb. It doesn't benefit anybody. It's, so who besides Arizona then? No, it was it, there's a Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania, Florida doesn't do it. Florida does it. Then it was uh, one of the Carolinas, don't Carolina? do it or something. Okay. But um, here, I'll, I'll pull it up See, right and that's, now. that makes it even stranger that that only some parts of the country do it. So just let's just stop doing it. I just don't understand. <clears throat> Isn't it costly to people? I mean, I know that everyone has to make some kind of program so that your computers and your phone all automatically change times. Hawaii is the only other state. It says Arizona, so Hawaii, seven states, American Samoa, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands don't observe daylight savings time because it's stupid. Some parts of Indiana still don't, but which they're sm- smart, like so forty-eight states, yeah, ridiculous, yeah. and most of the world. That's dumb. Australia dumb. does it. I don't know why. No, I don't know why. But a lot of Asian countries don't do it though. Because they're smart. I'm, maybe because. Or your routine, but my yeah. question is though. So my question before we get move on. So Come when on. they get say they get rid of daylight savings, which one are they going to stick to? The spring forward or the fall back? Which one are we going to stick? Does on? it matter? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't know. It you, really you, 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 you just you just want to fall back and then get that, get your hour back. I want my then, hour back. And then, then move we'll forward. stay that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then move I'm forward. Not like because oh. this week has been rough. Like I was almost it's late only to. Monday. I was almost uh, well. No, yesterday, Sunday, too, was part of this whole. This, yes, it was the whole. Every part of this week that has ellipsed so far <laughs> has been rough <laughs> due to daylight so saving. I just tell you that um, I, I don't know. I really like it being light later. I, like, I do too. Yeah, I don't mind getting up early when it's dark. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, I mean, it's a little. It's a little hard. Uh, you're like, oh, it's dark. I should still be sleeping. Mm. But you get used to that. I did do that this morning. Did you? Ugh. Yeah, I woke up. I was like, my clock says six. To- <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> we got to go. We got to get out hurry, of here. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> what time do you get out of the house in the morning? Uh, I'll be gone by like 6.15, 6.30. Whoa. What about you? Later. 10. No, 10. She used to be really good about that stuff. She hung around me. And I'd be like 7 o'clock up. Her stuff is shifting now into Because you're a late night day. person. Yeah. Are you an early morning person or a late night person, Gabe? Um, I have to leave for work at like 9. 
<gasps> I wake up at like 8, 7.30. Oh, nice. So, yeah. That's good. I just like to not be groggy. Yeah. I don't like to so get up in the morning and immediately have to go. An hour. Nice. I have to be to bed by like 12.30 or 1 o'clock because I'm up at 6. And if I'm... If I don't have, like, that fifth hour, I treat people differently. <laughs> no, I need a lot more sleep than that, and I am, like, a 9 o'clock bedtime kind of person. My roommate's the same nine way. 9 o'clock bedtime? Kid mm-hmm. to bed about 8, and he's in bed then, too. You know you're going to miss MASH? <laughs> you miss but all it's on Netflix. I, I got that. But, geez, you know what I'm saying? It's on like, Netflix without commercials. Uh, but they still got the music. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Because in my world, that means go to bed. Because oh, yeah. if you get caught halfway through Nash up, you get woo Because it's like 1030. That's, that's a punch in the face. How old are you? I'm 31. Oh, yeah, this case, like, man, you're... S- you're too young He's to an old soul. Yeah, you're, you're too young to be knowing that kind He's of shit. Man. No, so I mean, but like Mash came on at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Then, you know, when I was so yeah. when we were kids, so that's when we, we heard kids. that. And it's like, oh, fuck. So I, you would hear the music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> right. And by the time the song ended at the end, that do, 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 do. You're in your room, door closed. And you never hear the last few notes. Yeah, no. but if you did, you... <laughs> it's, you, be, you better get there because somebody is about to give you the business. Mm-hmm. Man, that, uh, bedtime was critical. That's a deadline. Like, I could be in media because the meeting deadlines, 10 30, my mom would come in and kill you if you didn't meet the deadline. Uh, oh, I know funny. your mom. She was not, she didn't have to. She just went. I mean, no, she kind of, I was the middle of six. My big brothers were far more rebellious than I was. 10 30. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. By the time I'd seen my big brothers get the nunchuck so many times, I knew what 1030 meant. <laughs> gotta go. Gotta go. All right. What are you looking at? So I saw a story today. As okay. I, was, I, I like to read variant stories because that's just how we get our newspapers these days uh, online. So I saw something where I hadn't used the restroom yet. And so I thought, oh, this is going to get bad. And why I say that is because the polit- there's a Politico story. <laughs> Let me just read it. I'm sorry I had a time if anybody gets sick from this this couple of sentences here because just Uh-oh. whatever. Fox News has the most or has the most trusted network and cable news coverage in the United States. Shut your pie hole. According to a new Quinnipiac 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 University poll released Monday. Wow. Right, like I mean, uh, and we have to believe the Quinnipiac polls because they also said that um, whatever sixty percent of people believe that cannabis should be legalized. So we'll we'll believe that that all the people polled thought so that. Probably all senior citizens. Right. I mean, it does They're say all... in comparison ratings or rankings, twenty nine percent responded that they trust Fox News the most. CNN followers with twenty two percent. CBS News and NBC News are at 10%, ABC News at 8%, and MSNBC at 7%. This is Politico kissing in ass. Well, <laughs> something. I, I mean, I, I don't believe no, that it's I mean, true. It's just the fact that if if we've got X amount of, of news stations and Fox is, is leading no, as being the most trustable... No, 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 no. This that's is not, that's, terrifying. They're using, that's, the, that's a different word. The most trusted and the most trustable, that's a big, that's right. big, big difference. The most trusted, if there's, if you, if all five of us in this room agreed that, or, or five of us in the room watched news and three of you guys felt that y'all trusted Fox News, in this room it would be the most trusted. We all know it's bullshit, (laughs) but if you guys felt that way, so they probably grabbed a group in the country because it is the leading in, in, it has like the highest numbers, especially during that prime time hour with O'Reilly and Hannity and all that other BS. So they do have the numbers. So the majority of people who see it in the, in the, uh, are going to be the majority of people in the room. Right. So they're the most trusted. Trustworthy by, and entirely different. But by the, by the people in the room. So if there's ten people and there's ten people in the room and f- six people trust them, they're the most trusted. It's a numbers game. It is not factually that they are saying stuff that is true trustworthy. That's right. That's right. It's just you it's, know what I'm saying. It's just what people believe. It's what people believe. Not what I believe. Right. Although I gotta tell you, I'm not. But sure But it did that say only 29. percent That still leaves a large 71. percent That's like. Yeah, but 
Right. <laughs> but they, they also believed in those other newscasts. I personally would be, I, I don't know if none of the above was, was an option, but that would be me because I'm not sure that I trust any news station, well, any, I, any news. I mean, I mean, I think that, that you can't <clears throat> trust anything. I mean, there, there's no, you, had, you would have to be able to fall back on where something is believable or some, there's some proof I'm in sure something. I'm sure that there's some truth to a lot of the stories. Do I think that everything that they report is completely accurate? Absolutely Or not. how they report the or stories. Or how they report it is accurate, no. Yeah, like, oh, a plane fell out the sky. Truth. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> where exactly it landed, that's Even what a airline it was, yeah. oftentimes, yeah. That's, that's a scary statistic that you... Thanks, Quinnipiac University. I, but I mean, because I do like Quinnipiac does do this all the time. They right. drop a lot of polls. I have absolutely nothing against the poll no. because I do trust them in the sense of I would use right. their polls. You just don't like the information that it, that came out of it. You, uh, this one is a little I would find different for me. I think it's a little skewed because where they say the most trusted, I think they got 10 people. I mean, I think that they got the number of people and ask, who do you trust? Who do you trust? Who do you trust? And out of that percentage of people, the majority of them said. Okay, Fox so Moon. let's let's take a little um, I cannabis radio poll. Of those options, Gabe, so it was <clears throat> and CNN. NS, MSNBC. It was Fox, CNN, CBS, NBC, ABC, and MSNBC. I'm not sure why they throw that one in there. It seems Cause they're different. like it's, they're different, it's different. Okay, so what's, what, what's your – what's your – what do you think is – how exactly did they word it? The, what is, is the news network that you trust? The – the most has the most trusted news source network, network and cable news coverage. Can I say anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Um, They're pretty good. I could say CNN, I guess. Like, who do you look to? If there's a tragedy going on, who do you look to first? Like, CNN. I agree. I, I mean, too, I would say CNN. Uh, yeah. Not Again, if, if none of the above was an option, that it would be mine. It depends on what I'm looking for. But, like, no, say that you woke up and you heard you heard that there was a terrorist Jackson, attack in, oh. in, in fucking, uh, I don't know, any state. Just not here. Uh-huh. And it's kind of far. Uh, with Tennessee. And who, which website would you go to first to check out what, who was? My website first would be... Probably like Huff Post or something first, because I'm probably more progressive. I see myself that more lean in that way. But uh, if I turned on the TV, the first place I'd probably go would be, I mean, ooh, I would probably go like one of the regular channels, the CBS, ABC, NBC, whichever one I got first. And then no BS. Now that I think about it, I would probably go over to Fox News. I would go over there and see. I mean, because more on the, I want to hear what the hell they're gonna say. Not necessarily, oh, they're about to lead me in the right direction. It's like, oh, <laughs> they're going to say some dumb shit. Here we go. <laughs> right. Let's fire up this wheel. Well, so, it's just like what they taught <coughs> in radio school, just invoke a reaction. Right. Doesn't matter. Oh, and Fox yeah, capitalizes yeah. on that one. Don't they? That's Sarah, sure. what about you? Of those options, which would you pick? CNN. 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 So in this room, CNN is the most trusted, trusted news source in this room. So, and, and we all know when we go there, we're not expecting to see facts. We're just expecting to see something that we can go back to later and say, you guys are fucking stupid. So, But you asked a different question. You asked Ronell the question, which website would you go to or which news source would you – that wasn't how I came up with my, with my answer. Of those, CNN would be my most trusted. But if I wanted just some quick news, I would probably um, flip on the TV and go to uh, whatever major network. The first I have. one. Why hit first I mean, to get to get information, but that doesn't mean that I trust them most. That just means convenience-wise, click channel nine. Look, there's what's going on. NBC local news. Or Be- because I'm news. thinking like breaking news. For example, like mm-hmm. somebody would say, "You hear Michael Jackson died?" You like, hold on, wait a minute. Turn on TV. Oh no, you go to Facebook yeah. for that information. I, I mean, Facebook <laughs> Facebook gives you that information. Right, that's where you find out. They in the hand first it place. to you because when you're sitting in your room, you're not actually out in the real world overhearing somebody go, right. "Hey, did you hear Michael Jackson yeah. just OD'd a few minutes right. ago?" No, so I mean, exactly. So when I read it on Facebook or something, I go, "Oh snap! Hold on, this might have validity to it." And then you click turn, on TMZ. I, I turn on TMZ is not necessarily my first. Because they do, they're different. Did you they see what's different. going around today from TMZ? What? No, they drop stuff really fast. They drop 
sex tape mixtapes super fast so they get them like mixtape. they get them real quick but i mean i don't go to them first because they i think they have like a tabloid feel to them oh, yeah, and much that's so. something Absolutely. that that's gossiping that's that little shit that bitches do in high school that's and right. i don't like that i mean for me that's kind of not girl something. bitches and boy bitches that's something that i don't really like to participate in now they do have some juicy shit over there don't get it i do like <laughs> to eat juicy stuff but what's going on there today before we take a break where you said TMZ. on tmz there's something that they i'd say they released a video the from the Suge Knight oh, ordeal. When did they they released on? it this morning, yeah, where it shows it. But there's still a question of if... And I didn't know nothing about it. It was just the first actual thing when I rolled over, I grabbed my phone, whatever, and I looked on Facebook, that was there. And it's like... Interesting. Not entirely sure who everybody is in the game, but whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, like, for me, like I said, that... Like, but it was a brutal video because you see somebody get run over. I mean, like, he up backs up and he just... Plows over one, he hits another guy. But I mean, dude got ran. Oh, and you see it, and you feel this, That's like, awful. holy fuck, this somebody this is... just got killed in front of me. Yeah. And That's... then, of course, somewhere later, a video comes up of that one police shooting that that guy that's <coughs> running with his hands up, and the police are just chasing him, <coughs> just and shoot, shoot him. him. And it's like, holy fuck, I just saw somebody die. Right. Like right. he just fell down. This isn't a game. It's not a movie. There's no drama. He's just fucking dead right there. And the cops are like, sweet. We're awesome. There's like 20 of us. See, if TMZ this. dropped more of those videos, that's where I'd be at. But they're they dropping more of the, where yeah, Lindsay yeah. Lohan was when she decided she wanted to get fucked up. Who gives a fuck about these people? Right. Like, but not the, people that makes them a lot of money. Period. Why don't, why don't they follow around politicians and watch these fools get blowjobs in the back of their Cadillacs and shit and see the prostitute jumping out and then they interview her? That's the stuff I want to see. There probably were websites like that, and those people are probably all dead somewhere. You remember Larry Flint did one? He was like, I'll give any woman $50,000 if she says she slept with a politician. But this was like back in like the 80s or something. Right. They probably now. went in and fixed all that. And, and did stuff to stop people from doing stuff like that. Which sucks, because that would be freedom of the press. Hmm. Right, which we know there isn't. <laughs> right. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come right back, and then we are going to talk about Nate Jackson, okay? Yes, please. Yeah, cool. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Oh, man. <coughs> I found the sixth. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it on grass. Runongrass.com. Dispensary owners and growers. In today's world, it helps to be insured. So call Cuffle, Collimore and Company, where we provide medical marijuana insurance for dispensaries and growers. Are you looking for insurance that protects you against property theft? Then give Cuffle, Collimore and Company a call, where we include product liability and professional liability, as well as crop insurance for growers. Remember, find us at mmdispensaryinsurance.com or give us a call at 877-335-1234. The Law Offices of Vets and Maiden and Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. Catch a case for Mondays. I Cannabis Radio has you covered. Happy Mondays with Georgia and Jeremy is back now. Now. I love that. That's my favorite. Welcome back. How's, how's producing going? Oh, it's going just fine. Yeah. Are you, you're glad that Gabe's helping you, though? Yes. Yes. Well, because last week it was it was fairly simple because it was hard as fuck. Didn't know what everything to push. So. And you just push it buttons. It was fairly simple because it was hard as fuck. Well, because it got that. down to where we couldn't broadcast video. Like, we just couldn't figure out why that wasn't. So that made it easy because, like I said, we could move around and do things the whole time while we're trying to figure shit mm. out. Mm. And then it became, we were like, all right, well, there's nothing left to do. So fuck it. All we got to do is talk. We're not even having commercials. So sweet. Just, we're just going until we're done. I know. We, we had a commercial. <coughs> excuse me. A commercial free. Yeah, it was crazy. So last week, Cloverleaf University um, and Cloverleaf Consulting put on um, sports, meds, and money, a three-day conference about those, th- those three things. The first day was about 
um, medical marijuana and sports, or marijuana and sports. The second day was kind of about um, businesses and best practices. And then the third day was um, the classes that you can take at Cloverleaf University. And it was really it was really interesting. I mean, you guys know that, that my bent is definitely, um, you know, uh, sports as, and, and marijuana and sports uh, uh, as a performance enhancer or, or recovery use. And I actually did a pr uh, presentation on um, cannabis as a sports enhancer. It was awesome. I'll share that with you guys another time. But the big news that came out of that <coughs> was uh, – ex-tight end of the Denver Broncos, Nate Jackson, who was with the Broncos for six years, uh, came out. He's retired now, obviously, or he wouldn't be coming out having this conversation, <clears throat> about how tough it is to be a football player and how quickly and easily you get injured and how marijuana is what got him through. Um, he, you know, he, he describes playing football as going out and being attacked or attacking other people the entire time. That's what your job is. You either are attacking or you are getting attacked. Getting attacked. Getting attacked. Car wreck every day. Yeah. Um, right. And over and over. Right. Over but and over. Somebody's at least paying you for it. 20 weeks a year. What are you going to sell <laughs> your soul price. for? You know, what's, what's the price? And he talked about how, you know, at any given moment, somebody wants your job. So, so what you need to do is you need to recover fast. You don't want to say that you're in pain. And, and it's not a surprise that lots and lots of, of major sports uh, professional sports athletes uh, are addicted to pain pills. Um, and After the game, or going yeah, on. I mean they're 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 given out like candy by by the the team doctors, and it wasn't for him. And and so what he did uh, to help himself recover um, was to break the rules was break the rules was break the rules. And he talked about how when being tested for illicit drugs, they do that once a year. And so, so they know when they're going to get tested, and they know that if they pass that test, they're not going to get tested again. So, so he felt pretty confident in, in using his medicine to be able to help him be a good football player. So Von Miller had to be really stupid to get tested? Mm -mm. Well, well, yeah. I Von mean, Miller's from a different place. He's from Texas. So down there where he was probably getting... Mexican brickweed. He gets up here, gets that shebang bang. They're like, you got to stop. He's like, shit, this is so good. <laughs> I got me some shebang bang. So yes, I mean, so yes, when you get, when you start eating the best candy in the world and they be like, here goes some Skittles, you're like, and well, that's kind of what happened. And, and you know, I mean, you can, you can say that, that he was an, an idiot to get caught and, and you got to say like intellectually, okay, if he knew that he was going to get tested on X date, but, but you know what? I mean, for whatever reason that, that Vaughn or any other professional athletes um, smoke pot or use, or use cannabis in any way, um, I mean, it, it's unfortunate that they have to stop. It's unfortunate that, that they have to think through, wow, this is really helping me um, re relieve this, this unbelievable amount of pain that I'm experiencing. And, and I'm going to have to stop for, for maybe... For at least a month. 30 days, 45 days, depending on... You know, your body mass. Um, Von happens <laughs> to be pretty muscular, so it wouldn't be as bad as someone who was chubbier. Um, well, my favorite is how people that don't use it are like, well, that's easy. It's only a month. You can do it. And it's like, well, you're sure, but minutes turn into hours, turn into days when you're in pain. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so there, um, when on Wednesday when, when Nate Jackson gave his, his um, presentation, I mean, he did an amazing job. Um, and... Every single uh, news source in the country, including <coughs> Fox News, the most trusted news source according to Quinnipiac University, um, did you know took up this this article because it, it was it was fascinating. So I'm going to read the HuffPo version. Um, this was released on the AP, um, and HuffPo picked it up. It says Franco, former Broncos right tight end Nate Jackson says he believes the NFL will have no choice but to remove marijuana from its list of banned substances in the near future. Speaking at a marijuana business conference, Jackson called on the league to allow medical marijuana as a means to help players deal with the physical and psychological pain and head injuries inherent in their profession. Jackson said he avoided opiate painkillers as much as he could during his six-year career. Instead, he self-medicated with marijuana so that he wouldn't retire addicted to prescription drugs like so many of his contemporaries. You know, it's, it's pretty fascinating to me that um, 
you know, we all know that this happens. There aren't a lot of uh, professional athletes that are really willing to come out and talk about this because they're so worried about, about public per- perception. Nate wrote a book about it. Um, he really feels like this is kind of his calling, that he needs to, to really s- talk about what, what's worked for him and what other people are doing and not talking about. He said it kept his brain clean. Um, he said he feels, I feel like I'm excited to play the game with my mind intact, and I credit that to marijuana in a lot of ways and not getting hooked on these pain pills that are recklessly distributed in the league when a guy gets an injury. He said that he believes most NFL players use marijuana. They're only tested for street drugs once a year. And they're aware that probably over half of the players smoke weed. They've been doing it since they were teenagers. The fact that they've been doing it the whole time and still made it to the NFL and are able to satisfy the demands of a very, very strict employer on a daily basis means that their marijuana use is in check. Marijuana is not a problem in their lives. You know, it's, it's not surprising to all of us, but clearly it's surprising to to kind of the general public that this article, this this news piece went so viral. And, you know, I gotta tell you, it was pretty cool for me being on this panel with <clears throat> Nate Jackson, Scott Dura, who is a chef to a lot of professional athletes, Mike Donifon, who is not only the current mayor of Glendale, Colorado, but he was also a Broncos player as well. Um, so it was, it was pretty interesting to get kind of a, a longitudinal view of, of cannabis and, um, and, and athletics. And, and no one felt like it was a, it was a bad idea. No one felt like it was, it was a harmful thing. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was cool. But was it viewed at all as a performance enhancer? Well, you know, that was what my whole presentation was about. And according to the world anti-doping agency, it's, it absolutely is on the banned list. And in order to be on the banned list, you have to meet three criteria. So in order to be, to be banned in, in professional sports um, or competitive sports worldwide, one, the drug has to be performance enhancing, duh. It has to be um, a potential health risk and or it has to be against the spirit of the sport. And so cannabis meets kind of all three of those criteria. <laughs> well, don't vitamins meet at least a potential health risk? I mean, take... Take ten vitamins a day and see how you do after they have a to week. Be, they have to meet all three, though. Or I'm sorry, they have to meet two of the three. I mean, the so, thing I use to work out is banned by the NFL. So the well, stuff I use to work out with. But if it's an enhancer, an outright enhancer, if it's meant to help your muscles grow twice as fast, or if it's meant to help you, well, I don't know. I mean, if it's meant, if it's like an expectorant, for example, and it's meant to help you breathe better, it's meant to which keep cannabis your lungs is. open. Cannabis is a bronchodilator and an expectorant. Well, there so, you go. There you go. So, and it's also, um, they believe it's potentially a health risk, um, you know, because it could it could lead to a myriad of, of medical conditions, um, a- anything that you smoke, definitely. And then, of course, unfortunately, it meets the being against the spirit of the sport, primarily because of its because of its illegality <coughs> worldwide. So, on on there's a, a meme going around right now that shows <coughs> two sets of lungs. It shows one set of lungs that has smoked tobacco, and like the bottom part of it is all like brown, the I've rest of it's that, all yeah. red. Yeah. And then the marijuana lung, and it's all, almost all brown. And then you go to the lung.org website, where this funded by the alcohol and tobacco industry website has some sort of credibility. It says that marijuana contains 33 cas- cancer causing carcinogens. Car- carcinogens but nowhere can you find which ones. There's, there's not. I mean, where do they get those facts? Well, I mean, it makes me wonder if indeed they ever tested anything. What they were testing was it was it chemicals that that the grower sprayed on flour? Was it? I mean, because in the plant itself, I mean, that to me is like saying your lawn has 33 cancer causing uh, chemicals. Only because we fertilize it. Well, right, yeah. I mean, exactly. Like, cigarettes are totally safe as long as it's tobacco leaf rolled in tobacco leaf. Right. It's not totally safe, but right. it's, it's what it is. But Marlboro gets a hold of it, and they're like, how much shit can we put in here? Right. Well, and, and, and smoking cannabis in particular can be, can be beneficial. It can be a bronchi- broncho- bronchiodilator, like, like an el- it, That's potentially. Exactly. Here's, unfortunately, the, the research shows that it's, it's only got a short-term effect. So it's a bronchodilator for six to eight weeks, and then, then it stops. Then you're back to being high. Then, then, and now you're just getting high again. And you can't breathe. 
And so, um, you know, I think that there's the potential that 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 cannabis could come off that list. But everyone seems to think that that's some kind of insult to cannabis. I don't think it is. It, it sh- to me, it shows that there's benefit to this plant that even the World Anti-Doping Agency, which which job is to put together to synthesize all of the the um, performance enhancing drug rules from all over the world, so that if Canada plays Turkey in some sport, um, that whatever Canada has banned, Turkey has banned it as well. Um, I mean, it, it's not an insult. Do we? Is it unfortunate that we're already kind of a step down and people already think badly of cannabis? Yes, but this isn't the same as growth hormones. You know, ca- caffeine was just recently pulled off of, of the banned list. <laughs> so how long does caffeine stay in your system? Like three days? Me? Like forever. So if you drink a cup of coffee, or if you drink a Coke, you drink a can of Coke or, or it's Pepsi. It's like 72 hours. Really? Ugh. Depends who you are. I mean, I mean, if you drink it all day, every day, it's probably going to take longer. But I'm going to say somebody who doesn't typically drink one, have one, 72 hours. You're not used to the white sugars and all that. Still, wow. The other thing about, <laughs> about cannabis And your being liver's the... good, though. Your liver's good at getting rid of stuff. That's, That's right. Your liver's competent. Um, as long as you're not filling it with alcohol. Right. All the other times you're not putting sugar and shit in it. No, that's just putting. That's just turning up the like the game for your liver up to like all mad in. Like you know what I'm saying. Water's like novice. You know what I'm saying. Soda's like a uh, intermediate, and then alcohol. That's the big boy game. <laughs> <laughs> all right, should we take a quick break and come back? All right. Yeah. See you in a minute. Dispensary owners and growers. In today's world, it helps to be insured. So call Cuffo, Collimore and Company, where we provide medical marijuana insurance for dispensaries and growers. Are you looking for insurance that protects you against property theft? Then give Cuffo, Collimore and Company a call, where we include product liability and professional liability, as well as crop insurance for growers. Remember, find us at mmdispensaryinsurance.com or give us a call at 877-335-1234. The Law Office of Edson Maiden and Matz provides criminal defense, family law, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running a medical marijuana center, optional premises cultivation operation, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout the state of Colorado. We're focused on providing high-quality service and customer satisfaction. We will do everything we can to meet your expectations. WarrenEdson.com, Edson Maiden and Matz in Denver, 303-831-8188, and in Aspen, 970-948-7183. Warren Edson. Are you a runner? Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it. On Grass. Runongrass.com. I'm Gary Johnson, and you're listening to iCannabis Radio, and I want to say, talk it up, Colorado. And we're back. Ooh, that was good. That was seamless. <laughs> right? Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Getting there. So, this is Happy Monday, and it's March. We never really came up with marvelous. one. Marvelous. There was, there was Marvelous. There was Magnificent. Oh, Magnificent. There's I so have many a mustache. Mustachio March. <laughs> <laughs> But that only applies to, to some of the people in the room. So, you know, it's got to be all encompassing. So, magnificent, marvelous, <coughs> but magnificent know. mustache. I mean, it all, I mean, it flows. It flows. That's right. But, you know, it's. It could be marijuana march. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> that would mess up marijuana May, too, though. Right. And well, yeah, we can marijuana de- May it. And marijuana de- December. You Do you know, know that? <laughs> Do you know that we're getting sued by, by some sheriffs? Who? Right, the sheriffs are teaming up right. now. So there's all these different lawsuits, oh, yeah, and yeah. That in that, he said that. Who? The sheriff, Larimer, the, 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 Larimer, ma- the main guy. Forget the his name. County sheriff. Blanking out all of a sudden. Douche. Um, yeah, douche, D douche Bigelow. Bag. This is um, the, this is the uh, this is the sheriff. This is like the sheriff's like a, a, a like association, like their their frat, like the sheriff frat. <laughs> Well, and he was saying that that this law or that legal cannabis in Colorado defies the Constitution of the United States. 
And it's like, wow, I must have missed the section where it says, and, and cannabis smoke. is illegal. <laughs> I know that this is wrote on him in parentheses, right. I think LOL. The part, I, mean, the, I think I read the same thing, and I think the part that he was drawing the, was the judgment of them swearing to the United Constitution oath and the Colorado oath, and that it gives them like, a, uh, there's like a gray area of judgment. Right, but nowhere in the... As a person. I know that the Constitution says that they're supposed to uphold the laws, but nowhere in there does it say that prohibition is a law. You know, Colorado has chosen to forego the the United States federal law, and we said it's legal now. We're tired of this. And so we wrote it into our Constitution. And who do you work for? Us. Right. Shut the hell up and let us get smoked out. Right. Exactly. Except for while we're driving. And, and it's not hurting anything. Like, right. like you like you've said many times, no riots have started, no no utter chaos, no nothing. Everything is totally normal. There's not even lines outside of dispensaries past January first of last year. Well, right. four twenty gets right. totally crazy. But that was true prior to legal cannabis. Right. So just just like there. liquor stores are really popular prior to uh, New Year's Eve, uh, prior to Super the Fourth of July, the yep. Super Bowl, five o'clock when you get off of work. <laughs> right. I, mean, I mean, there's happy Noon. hour. <clears throat> I mean, they drink so much that happy hour is from three to eight. I just, Happy hours. Uh, one of the things I want to ask it. about like weed is why is it such a thing where the majority of people who smoke pot do it in the comfort of their own home? Where the ma- I won't say the majority of people do alcohol, but alcohol is usually spilled out in the streets. Well, there should be. Because you can't. Because you can't. So here's so sheriffs from Colorado, and neighboring states, Kansas and Nebraska, say a lawsuit to, to say in a lawsuit to be filed Thursday, which it was filed. Um, that the Colorado's marijuana law creates a crisis of conscience by p- pitting the state law against the Constitution and puts an economic burden That's on other was. states. A crisis of, of crisis conscience. Of conscience. Yeah. So that was like them basically going, as an American citizen, how do I feel about it? Or as a Coloradoan. So they're kind of like debating on... It's, there's always it should a difference, be a between... difference between what's right or wrong. Well, wouldn't that be And easy? that's what they're doing. I think then be... right and wrong is all judgmental or, or not judgmental. It's all... Uh, Fuck. Whatever. So lead plaintiff, Larimer County, Colorado Sheriff Justin Smith, the name you were trying to recall, calls the case a constitutional showdown. Each day, he says, he must decide whether to violate the Colorado Constitution or the U.S. Constitution. Colorado is, quote, asking every peace officer to violate their oath, end quote. What we're being forced to do makes me ineligible for office. Which constitution are we supposed to uphold? The out-of-state sheriffs say the flow of Colorado's legal marijuana across the border has increased drug arrests, overburdened police and courts, and cost them money in overtime. Felony drug arrests in the town of Chapel in Duell County, Nebraska, seven miles north of the Colorado border, jumped 400% over three years. A USA Today reports tracking the flow of marijuana from Colorado into small towns across Nebraska. Duell County Sheriff Adam Hayward... Of course, it's Adam Hayward. Does that, is, is one of the plaintiffs. That just sounds like a Nebraska sheriff's <laughs> name to me. Right, doesn't it though? Police officers monitoring the flow of marijuana outside Colorado say the volumes have risen annually. The Colorado-based Rocky Mountain High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Task Force is still compiling 2014 numbers, but expects to see the trend continue. Non-residents often strike backdoor deals with legal growers to buy more than they are allowed, then illegally drive, fly, or mail the marijuana across state lines. That is not. Happening. That is not happening. Wouldn't That's it, not what's happening. Wouldn't it just be easier to legalize it and, and right, stop it the problem? Like I mean, in there, Nebraska, in Kansas, there, just legalize it. It's legalize. not problem. It's, stop. It's not these. It's oh, that's not happening. What, I I'm I don't doubt that that these drug busts have increased even by four hundred percent. And and for that, I am sorry. That that sucks. How about how about Either A, legalizing it, like you said, or B, telling your citizens not to do stupid shit. Well, Don't but they're going to do, do what d- they want <laughs> anyway. I mean, to a right. point. That's right. But And if and mailing it, I don't know. That doesn't seem too stupid. I mean, they're I driving mean, shit anyway. It's, it's not like it's toxic. But not saying, I'm not suggesting to mail, but. But it's illegal. It's, right, exactly. Don't, don't do it. So, But if it was legal in, if right. cannabis it, was legal in say, Nebraska. Nebraska, 
They wouldn't court, drive here, and they would stay in Nebraska because I'm tired of people moving here. Right. All the money would stay in Nebraska from you Nebraska. Mean, you mean here. the tax revenue? Right. That All they this bring? lovely tax revenue that that we're grateful to get because thank you neighboring states for supporting our tax system but Period. but if if these guys want it take it it's all there we're not we're not just making stuff up out right. of thin air it's not like this is some exclusive colorado product i mean but, it, and, the, and the other thing it is, can grow in any basement you want it to damn right and we have companies that'll show you how but these le- <laughs> these legal these are coming from legal growers you know your your unbelievable amounts that you're taking across state lines aren't coming from someone who's legally growing their six plants not likely not likely. No. Not no. likely. Um, and it's not likely coming from somebody that's got a super sophisticated grow that's anxious to get caught either. Right. You know? Hey, hey, who's going to risk selling you 10 pounds for this whole million, $2 million operation that I fucking bled my eyes? Right, that you paid into. all of these licensing fees, that you are you are filmed on everything that you do. You and have... you know how much more money we make by selling it in 20s in the store? <laughs> right. That's right. You know? That's right. I mean, so so that's unlikely. So so to me, this isn't about legal weed. This is about um, that people are coming here and they're excited about it and they're going back. However, they're getting it and they're going back. And and someone's saying, oh, they just crossed over the border. I think I. Oh yeah, their car smells like weed. And and people do dumb stuff. Let's just they do dumb stuff. Oh yeah. Is it is it worth it? I mean, is this is this victimless crime? Is is it worth spending your manpower putting people in jail for doing this lot this lawsuit's it's comical to me it's comical it really is it's embarrassing um what sucks is the same sheriff a couple of years ago that fought against the gun bans is now trying to sue us for marijuana and it's like well wait a minute you were okay with with the second amendment a little while ago but now i don't know it's it's I mean I that's think, why it's hard to support one politician because right. he's not going to be there for every single thing that you need but people just blindly vote for their politician and that's why we have idiots in Congress. That's right. Yeah, it's I mean and weed and guns are two totally different things and I think we need way more weed and, and far, far less, less guns. guns. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, more weed less gu- less guns. Someone should make a shirt that says that. More right, weed, but the problem guns. is, is more weed, that less guns. it's not safe enough for us to have less guns until the government has less guns. Mm. That's why the Second Amendment was wrote in the first place. It's not a hunter's amendment. It's a protection from tyranny. And the deer is not being the tyrant. So. Yeah, because the police is killing people like a mug. And it's getting out of hand. Yes. They need to so. smoke some weed and relax. Thank you. And figure out what constitution that they should pay attention to. Because right. yeah. I think they should pay attention to the people that put them in office. Right. So yeah. if the people, the people vote to have something enacted in their state constitution. Or however you become a sheriff. I don't know. But... Yeah, I mean, well, I wonder where their checks come from. Does their check say United States, or does their sex check say State of Colorado? I think because we could fix that, right? You know what I'm saying? You can go get a different job somewhere. Right. The, the FBI will pay you, and then you can enforce federal law. Then you can enforce federal law wherever they tell you. They're not letting, They're not telling people to do it here. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Wow. So, so iCanvas Radio has a new show on Wednesdays. Nice. Bibliophilia. It starts at 6 p.m. So, so you got to explain more. That's a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like it's, bubble and shampoo. It's a fun word. Bibliophilia. It's bibliophilia. It's about books. They, addiction to books. It's nice. addiction to something. So okay. check it out. Nice. Wednesdays, 6. Wednesdays, 6 o'clock. Nice. Yeah, Mountain Time. We're check them out. Lay Miserable. Lay Miserable <laughs> will be this Wednesday. It'll be wonderful. Check them out. What else, Jared? Anything else coming up this week? Um, I don't know. I'm starting to see all the 420 stuff, so April's going to be huge. So whatever peace and quiet we're enjoying now, it's going to go away real quick as soon as it's just, everybody's coming here. I mean, there's huge concerts. Uh, there's a lot. Of stuff. There's a lot. I mean, a lot. A lot. And, and April 20th is on a Monday this Right, so that weekend Which is, is going to be slamming. Greatest day of the week. There's, there's, it is. A, there's all kinds of things. So it's going to get it's going to get crazy. So whatever, like I said, whatever little joys, little softness. Are we going to do a show, 420 show? Oh we'll shit, see. that is. I mean, we should do it early. <laughs> we may just have to record that one and, and just. I mean, because I can't. It, you know. After 420, I, I'm definitely I not going to be anywhere. 
<laughs> useful. I know. I don't think. I don't think anybody is. I'm actually tired on 420. Like, I'll probably big, be downtown. Yeah, it's a big like, day. If there's going to be a rally that day, I'm. I'll be there. I'll probably so. be either near Redman and Method Man or Snoop Dogg and Wiz Khalifa in two. Method Man, Redman, Cypress bar? Hill is on 19th, if I'm not mistaken. What's That's your favorite candy bar? Candy bar. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna be a red man and rep method man. Uh, candy bar. My favorite candy bar. Ooh. Snicker. <laughs> I would say like a butter. Snicker Ooh, Butterfingers. Okay. On that note, <laughs> I've I've seen them too many times. I What's need to your stop. favorite candy bar? Snicker A Snicker. All right. So we will see you guys next week, Monday. It'll be the sixteenth. Oh my gosh. March is going to fly. supposed to be in the 70s by this weekend, so we're going to get that spring teaser before we get that last snowstorm. We'll all be in bathing suits, so that'll be the dress code for next week, so check us out. Nice. Good night. Good night. Thanks for listening.